E-W-S. It is the Overnight Underground Weekend Roundup. Taking a look at the stories we covered this week on the Overnight Underground. Possible coronavirus vaccines could be on the way. Michigan-based Moderna has gone on record that early results from their COVID-19 trial vaccines are showing promise. All 45 participants in the trials developed antibodies against the virus. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies. Needless to say, Moderna's stock price has also been a big gainer today, up around 40%. Can anyone say pump and dump? Just pump up the volume and call me Kitty. A priest at St. Andrew's Parish in Gross Point, Michigan, not only got into the spirit of the drive-by church service, Father Tim Pelk took it a step further. The power of Christ compels you! NBC's Today and other outlets are reporting that the priest, during Holy Week a little over a month ago, used a squirt gun to bless parishioners with holy water. Squirt, squirt. Pelk said, quote, You can't double dip into the holy water container. I thought, what could I do that would keep the quarantine restrictions going and give kids the experience of Easter? Undoubtedly, not the first time a priest gave the kids the old... Squirt, squirt. Awful. Just awful. Your cute little pussycat, he's a cold-blooded killer. A new Australian study has reported by the LAD Bible, house cats who strut their stuff outside the home are stone-cold killers. The study, published in Wildlife Research, notes that a single domesticated pet cat is capable of snuffing the lives of up to 186 reptiles, birds, and mammals in just one year. That's the first indicator of a serial killer, you freak. Jeff Dahmer would have been envious. In the lifetime of a cat, that's over 80,000 victims snuffed out by your adorable little serial killer. Honestly, cats should be categorized as biological weapons and controlled by the Geneva Convention. Let's see, what else we got here in the circus that is American politics? On Monday, Joe Biden moved out of his basement for his latest virtual town hall digital disaster. He decided to let the sunshine and fresh air in from his vestibule as he chatted with the American public. The only problem was invading Canadians were very vocal with Biden's streaming appearance. You know, the people who weren't necessarily prejudiced but just didn't focus. That's the geese you hear in the background. <laughs> the little pond out here. Those Canadian geese are, 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 are trying to get away from the virus. Anyway. Man, old touchy-feely Uncle Joe, he just can't catch a break. Who's your daddy? For Guffman. Hey, what happened? President Trump told reporters during yesterday's press conference that he had been taking the controversial drug hydroxychloroquine as a prophylactic against COVID-19. The press corps was aghast as Trump himself announced to the nation his use of the drug he believes will help ward off the virus. You'd be surprised at how many people are taking it, especially the frontline workers, before you catch it. I happen to be taking it. I happen to be taking it. I'm taking it. Hydroxychloroquine. Right now, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I started taking it. Trump's opponents quickly jumped on the news with warning that the drug's use could cause serious heart trouble and other complications. Honestly, I don't know why this is a problem for certain rabid sects of the Democratic Party. Seems to me they've been calling for Trump's death since he entered office. Nancy Pelosi jumped on the news and on the president's use of hydroxychloroquine on Monday's Anderson Cooper segment on CNN. The Speaker of the House used her airtime on the cable network to essentially call Trump a fat bastard. uh, uh, He's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientist, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. The press corps is currently salivating like Pavlov's dog in anticipation of the presidential shitstorm that is sure to follow. Still, fans of the president know he's not obese. He's just got big bone spurs. Let's see, what else we got here in the circus that is American politics? On Monday, Joe Biden moved out of his basement for his latest virtual town hall digital disaster. He decided to let the sunshine and fresh air in from his vestibule as he chatted with the American public. The only problem was invading Canadians were very vocal with Biden's streaming appearance. You know, the people who weren't necessarily prejudiced but just didn't focus. 
That's the geese you hear in the background. <laughs> the little pond out here. And those Canadian geese are, 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 are trying to get away from the virus. Anyway. Man, old touchy-feely Uncle Joe, he just can't catch a break. Who's your daddy? There's been quite a spike in the moronic behavior index over the last few days. In Volusia County, Florida, the sheriff's office had to break up a block party that numbered in the thousands. WFTV News reports police noted there were multiple arrests and numerous deputies were injured in altercations attempting to break up the melee. I want to party with you, cowboy. <laughs> I say, why not hide your identity with a watermelon? That was the cunning plan hatched by two thieves in Charlottesville, Virginia. The smoking gun notes that two lads decided wearing hollowed out watermelon rinds on their heads was the perfect disguise for stealing alcohol from a Virginia convenience store. Uh, guys, you got it bass backwards. You put the booze in the watermelon, not on your noggin, you numbskulls. I've come to stick my head in a bucket of something nasty. The White House, on the other hand, is presently predicting a swift economic recovery, though some experts think the West Wing might just be on the dope. You're high on drugs, I can see that. Reported in the Houston Chronicle, the Trump administration is conveying confidence that reopening states will counter the economic damage caused by COVID-19. Despite the shocking increases in unemployment and small business closings, White House economists are crossing their fingers and rubbing their elephants. Wait, can I say that? Yes, on this network you can. That the economy will roar back to life in the second half of this year. Good luck. We're all counting on you. Well, this seems kind of stupid. The new Black Panther Party staged a demonstration in D.C. on Tuesday protesting what they say is China's racist treatment of Africans during the coronavirus pandemic. That seems okay. The stupid part? They decided a Chinese takeout restaurant called Yum's was the perfect spot to stage their protest. Mother Jones writer Stephanie Mensimir, Menkemir, I got nothing here, caught the picket and posted the protest station on Twitter. Here's an edited bit of their demonstration, at least the part we could hear and possibly decipher. I can't hear y'all. Say it one more time. We're going to get it what we're going to do. Hey. Y'all don't have this bullshit ass vibes over here. Excuse my life. We're not dumb. We are very well educated. Yeah. We are here in the honor of him because he said his blood shed for us. According to Mint Samir, the restaurant Yum's is a, quote, beloved D.C. institution and home of the city's signature dish, chicken wings and mambo sauce. You know, you just can't make this shit up. You can't beat the classics, I only see. Today's big political attention horror move has reached spinal tap-like levels. These go to 11. Pelosi and Schumer are requesting Trump fly flags at half-mast when the death toll from the pandemic reaches 100,000 here in the U.S. Talking Points Memo reports the pandemic duo sent the letter to his royal orangutan on Thursday requesting the move. Come on, Trump hasn't flown anything over half-mast since Marla Maples. He'll be as hard as a rock in a minute. What's better than a food fight? I don't know. How about a paint fight? Okay. Four men at a Tampa Home Depot got into an altercation over, well, who the hell knows. It's Florida, after all. From the video, it's hard to make out just what the men are fighting over, as they don't appear to be speaking the English. But, uh, man, let me tell you, the paint was really flying. <laughs> Maybe they were arguing over whether their paint should be shaken or stirred. Shaken, not stirred. That video, of course, available on today's OvernightUnderground.com. Paging Dr. Fauci, where the hell are you? If you're still watching one of those endlessly depressing news channels, you may be asking yourself, how did I get here? No, the real question is, where did Dr. Fauci disappear to? CNN reports that Fauci has been MIA from national television interviews over the last couple of weeks. His last interview was on May 4th with Chris Cuomo. Fuck you, asshole. Speculation is that with the White House's communications team changing its PR strategy for the pandemic, Fauci has been put on the back burner. Maybe he's busy designing women's panties. It's not true. It's absolutely not true. Business Insider reports that an L.A.-based company is now selling women's underwear emboldened with the names of Fauci, Governor Cuomo, and Gavin Newsom. 
According to Canva, that's the company cashing in on those three sexy fellas. What do you want out of life? A fella. The panties have been selling like hotcakes. You know, I've always wondered, just where is it that hotcakes sell so well? Not anywhere around here. Anyway, the names of the three amigos are displayed on the front of the panties just above the... Junkyard. I'm thinking it should be plastered over the... Rectum. And other underwear-related news, Victoria's Secret looks like it's going bust. Is this some kind of bust? KIRO 7 News reports the skimpy clothing chain is closing nearly 250 stores nationwide. The parent company, L Brands, also announced the shuttering of 50 Bath & Body Works stores. Sorry, I, I didn't hear you. I was staring at your breasts. What do you say? Let's slide this little item in. The soundbite of the day. It's none other than your president and mine, Bullwinkle J. Trump, responding to a reporter's question about his controversial hydrochloroquine treatment to ward off COVID-19. The president said this. And I tested very positively in a in another sense. So this morning, yeah, I tested positively toward negative, right? So, no, I tested uh, perfectly this morning, meaning, meaning I tested negative. I believe that's a definite maybe. I speak English very good now. Could it be that during the test, the nose swab rammed a little too far up the presidential snoot and caused more brain damage to the old executive noodle? Yes. Just saying. But wait, we've also got another contender for the soundbite of the day, and it's from none other than presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. Biden told African-American radio host Charlemagne the God on a Friday morning interview that if someone is having difficulty choosing between him and Trump, then they, quote, ain't black. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. You know, I think that this one is better than the one from the other day. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Yeah, it's a total race to the bottom with these two. Honestly, I think. We're boned. Just how far will some journalists go to double down just to make sure Trump doesn't get reelected in November? Over at The Nation, journo Katha Polit. Katha Polit. I have no idea. Uh -huh. Seems to have the answer. Pollitt, Pollitt? <laughs> remarked in an article discussing the Joe Biden and Tara Reid scandal that she would vote for good old Uncle Joe, even if he, quote, boiled babies and ate them. You like children? I do if they're properly cooked. Maybe in next month's issue, the nation will print a good recipe. First, they infect the planet with their bat munching pandemic. Now, the Chinese are set to use coronavirus to end Hong Kong as we know it. Remember the good old days of the pro-democracy demonstrators in Hong Kong? The Chinese want everyone to forget they ever happened and have crammed their new draconian security law down the throat of the Hong Kong electorate. This new law bypasses Hong Kong's legislature by instituting a rarely used constitutional backdoor. Come on, squeal! Squeal! That is not actual audio from the Chinese oligarchy giving the good citizens of Hong Kong a good reaming, but it might as well be. I just want to say to the international community that this is the end of Hong Kong. This is the end of one country, two system. Make no mistake about it, that Beijing, the central people's government, has completely breached its promise to the Hong Kong people. A promise that was enshrined in the Sino-British Joint Declaration and the Basic Law. Opposition lawmaker Dennis Kwok in Hong Kong. Look for an end of the open internet, Chinese secret police setting up shop in Hong Kong, and anti-sedition laws to jail anyone who criticizes their Beijing overlords. Outside of a classical liberal democratic miracle, it looks like the party's over in Hong Kong. Are you saying these people are commies? No, I think I'm saying they're totalitarian, kleptocratic bastards. The Georgia man who filmed the shooting and death of Ahmoud Arbery has himself been arrested on murder charges. USA Today reports William Roddy Bryan was charged with felony murder and criminal attempt to commit false imprisonment in Arbery's shooting death. Bryan had claimed he was only being a good Samaritan when he filmed Arbery's death, but a newly released expanded version of the video apparently shows Bryan also chasing Arbery. Brian then allegedly filmed while Arbery was shot dead. And not all these people are lovely, nice people, believe me. 
Things are a little less fabulous in San Francisco today. The city's oldest gay bar, The Stud, is calling it a day. Oh, be nice! The bar owner told KRON-TV that due to declining revenues caused by coronavirus, they've decided to permanently close down their location in the Soma neighborhood. Too bad the place had to go down. I hear that before the pandemic, it was usually packed. That's a little joker. N E W S. A mostly correct and occasionally incomplete transcript and links to reference sources and articles of this Overnight Underground can be found at OvernightUnderground.com.